Welcome to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're glad you've chosen to watch us today. We are here every week meeting interesting people, dealing with topical issues, and uh, today we welcome in two guests. Well, once again from Tulsa, That's I right. might add, for the third consecutive week. Yes, as we were setting up our Tulsa shootings, uh, I asked around a little bit about we'd like to do a show with an organization that really makes a difference in Tulsa, and I got several recommendations all pointing toward the same guests that we have on today, Catholic Charities of Tulsa. We're going to have Kevin Sartorius and my partner Randall Snap from the Crow and Dunleavy Law Firm, who's actively involved in Catholic Charities, to tell us about what that organization is doing in, in Tulsa uh, for the entire community. We'll get to it. Catholic Charities of Tulsa, today's subject on The Verdict. We'll be right back. America has been here before, faced with daunting challenges, and we've always found the courage to lead. Foreign oil, greenhouse gases, we have the power to do something about them with American natural gas. Chesapeake is forging ahead, converting our fleets to clean burning natural gas vehicles, encouraging others to do the same. Welcome to America. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. This man is having a heart attack, and he doesn't even know he's at risk. Heart attacks aren't always as dramatic as you see on TV. Gone unchecked, heart disease could crumple everything. A simple heart scan could save your life. Get a $50 heart scan at St. Anthony, the most trusted experts in cardiovascular care. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guests. Today we're really pleased to welcome two guests to the set representing Catholic Charities of Tulsa. On my right is uh, Deacon Kevin Sartorius. He is the uh, Executive Director of Catholic Charities of, Tulsa, of the Tulsa Diocese. He did his undergraduate work at Oklahoma State University. He did six years worth of training uh, at Catholic University leading up to his ordination, which just took place recently as a deacon in the Catholic Church. Uh, the last seven years he's been at Catholic Charities. Uh, he's in charge of their campus. He's in, involved in the expansion of the campus as well as running the programs of Catholic Charities and expansion there as well. He and his wife Jennifer have five children and a month from now uh, they'll add number six. Uh, and this is his first visit to the verdict. Uh, Kevin, welcome. Thanks, Ken. We're Thank glad you. to have Thanks, you. Man. On my left is a partner of mine, Randall Snap from the Crow and Dunleavy office in Tulsa. Uh, Randall did his undergraduate work, his MBA work, his law work at the University of Kansas, so rock, chalk, Jayhawk. <laughs> uh, he has been with Crow and Dunleavy for about 18, 19 years. His practice is uh, pretty well limited to employment law, representing employers and management. Uh, he teaches employment law at the a collegiate level. He's actively involved in a lot of charitable and uh, civic uh, activities here in Tulsa not the least of which is, of course, Catholic Charities. Welcome. Glad to have you, partner. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, tell us about the Catholic Charities of Tulsa and, and your specific mission. Sure. Catholic Charities has been around for a long time, for over 50 years here in the uh, Tulsa area. We serve all of eastern Oklahoma, the eastern half of the state. 
And our mission is to reach out and help people in need. Uh, we serve people, we help them to understand uh, that they have dignity and they have uh, worth, they have value, and they have a positive future. We just need to help them get there. Right. Randall, what, what do you do for the Catholic Charities of Tulsa? Well, I've been involved with Catholic Charities on various levels. I'm currently a, one of the board members of the board of directors of Catholic Charities, and I've been involved in the committee that was on the capital campaign for the new facility that they have uh, in Tulsa. In addition, uh, I occasionally provide legal advice to them, primarily in the area of employment law, but other areas of, of legal advice as needed uh, to assist them with any problems they have, mostly policies and procedures and things like that. And then uh, my family and I uh, volunteer out at the Catholic Charities when we get the chance and really enjoy that opportunity. What is the uh, organizational structure of Catholic Charities? Uh, obviously, they have a board, of, it has a board of directors. That is correct. Uh, to whom does the board report? Uh, who reports to the board? How does that work? Well, the board basically reports to the, the Bishop of the Diocese of Tulsa, uh, Bishop Slattery, and uh, Kevin is the executive director. It runs the operations uh, subject to the, the direction of the board and, and also the, the Bishop of the Diocese. And how would you, as a board member, uh, not an ordained uh, uh, representative of the church, but as a board member, how would you describe the mission of Catholic Charities? Well, it, it's a mission of hope. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a mission of hope. It, it provides uh, benefits. It provides opportunities for people that are underprivileged that, that don't have the same opportunities as everybody else. Uh, it gives them an opportunity to get their life back in order in some circumstances. It gives them an opportunity some days just to get by on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but it also provides a lot of long-term educational opportunities for, for people that, that wouldn't otherwise have an opportunity to get that. Let me jump right in on that answer and you say as people who wouldn't have an opportunity. You're not simply speaking of Catholics that wouldn't no. have an opportunity. No, in fact that the majority of the individuals that are served by Catholic Charities in Tulsa are not Catholic and I think at times it's up to 90 percent of the people that are served by Catholic Charities are not Catholic. Well it's that very fact that uh, I already knew the answer to but it's that very fact that, wanted, that I made me want to do this show. Uh, Kevin, uh, tell us about the campus and the facilities. Sure, we have a new campus. It's a $22 million campus we just recently finished about a year and a half ago. Uh, it's located at uh, Apache and Harvard. So it's just a few miles north of the University of Tulsa and just a little bit west of the uh, Tulsa Airport. We put it there, it's, it's placed there because that's where we found people were most in need. Uh, and uh, it's uh, got quite a few services, about nine different programs, ranging from residential care where people come and live with us uh, to dental programs, educational programs like Randall mentioned, uh, food programs, we can talk about all of them, but uh, fantastic opportunity. Uh, as I would mentioned, Catholic Charities has been around a long time, uh, but we've been scattered throughout all of North Tulsa, and this provides us an opportunity to consolidate our services and really to serve people uh, with multiple needs. Well, give us an example of some of the services that are provided at that campus. One of the new things that we've uh, brought into our Catholic Charities campus is a dental program, so I could, I could highlight that. We have uh, mostly volunteers, 22 volunteer dentists uh, who've come together. Uh, we also have dental hygienists uh, who come to us from a variety of places, uh, TCC training program, OU's training program. They'll come in, they'll uh, work at operatories, dental office suites that look just like anything you'd go to, mm -hmm. and uh, they receive the same services that you would receive. It's all, though, without, no, without any cost uh, to the individual. Mm -hmm. uh, so that could be that they get their teeth cleaned, uh, they have uh, an extraction mm -hmm. for pain, uh, they have a filling, we do, we do crowns, we do dentures. It's the whole range of services, but it's all done uh, just to help them get past that problem that they have so that they can get back to life. What about wellness for, uh, in, in general health there? Are you providing wellness services? At, at well, we do level? have some. We, we do some diabetes education training and uh, nutrition training, things of that nature. Uh, on the other half of our uh, medical program, uh, we have a pregnancy operation. And in that, that program, we actually team with Oklahoma State University, and they have their, um, their OBGYN program bring in doctors and residents and we'll see the person, uh, the woman there, for about seven months, and then they'll deliver at either St. Francis or OSU, and it's all, again, at no cost to the individual. Randall, what are the type of decisions that the board is faced with making? What, <clears throat> what's on a typical Catholic Charities board meeting agenda? Well, it, it's a variety of things. Certainly there are some policy issues that need to be decided, but you know, as with any other organization, you have to have funding. 
you, you have to have uh, decisions made as to ongoing programs and, and how you want to handle those. And certainly, because it is a nonprofit organization, you have to work on fundraising. So in a, in a typical meeting, we go through various aspects of, of the simply running the organization. But one of the things that I really enjoy about going to the board meetings is that Kevin typically provides on every meeting a, a real life story. Uh, someone who has been helped by the organization will come in and, and talk about what Catholic Charity has meant to them. And some of those stories have been very, very uplifting to me and really want you to dedicate yourself to the, to the work of Catholic Charities. Uh, what about eligibility to receive services or to receive help? How is that determined? Uh, basically what we do is we have people come in and if they have another opportunity, so for example, if, if they can uh, receive services through another assistance program, that's where we try and ask them to go first. And so we'll go through and interview them in that process. Uh, then we will uh, determine if they can enter into the program. If they're able to, uh, we, we serve them, again, without any uh, regard to their uh, nationality, their religion, their race. Uh, we serve people who are in need, uh, and we try and find those who truly are in need. If, say, for example, a veteran can go to Veterans Affairs and receive medical benefits, we help them make that link and get to that service so that the slots that we have available are truly for people who have no other place to go. And I assume you see a lot of people who have, have some sort of substance abuse issue. The uh, problems are many in our society, and uh, we have to kind of meet people where they're at very often. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we find is when we sit down and, and talk with them, uh, they all want something better. Uh, the people who come to us are really looking to improve their lives and get beyond the problem, whether it be a medical issue, a job issue, mm -hmm. a drug issue. Uh, they, they really want to pick it up and go forward. And so that's what we help them with. We don't, we don't judge them. We just work with them to get right. them to the next place. Oklahoma is a lot of health care needs. Do you find that most of your, your, your work is involved in some level of health care or access to health care? Well, very many of the problems that we do encounter, uh, say for example, someone will have a health care issue uh, that creates an incredible expense for them, and then they end up not being able to pay their bills. So maybe we're not helping them with the medical issue per se, but they become homeless because of the bills. They can't, they can't stay in their apartment. They end up homeless, they, they need help with clothing, with food. They move into St. Elizabeth's Lodge, uh, an apartment complex that we have, mm -hmm. and we help them to get back on their feet so that this is a one-time occurrence. Right. It doesn't affect them the rest of their lives. It doesn't affect their children. Mm -hmm. We don't have generational poverty because of one medical issue, for example. What about mental illness? Is that something that you all have to address? We do address. Uh, the Tulsa Mental Health Association is a great partner in that. Uh, and so there are things that uh, we would make referrals on but we have a lot of people who come to Catholic Charities who will not necessarily get better because they have a persistent mental health issue. And we serve them with food and clothing. Uh, we give them education on how to deal with uh, daily living issues and, and help them get by at the level that they can. Kevin Sartorius and Randall Snap are our guests today on The Verdict. We're visiting about Tulsa Catholic Charities. We'll be right back. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda cobb Greetham. I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology, exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. Every time our country imports energy, we're saying we've lost confidence in our own. But Oklahomans know under the land of the free lies the energy to be brave. Advanced technology has led to vast discoveries of oil and natural gas that have doubled America's supply estimates. Using one well to do the work of 10 and half the time, we're proving that America's best answers will always come from inside our borders. 
Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, advancing our state, empowering our nation. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers were uh, visiting on Catholic Charities of Tulsa. And Randall, when we left, we were talking a little bit about the $20 million of funding. It's, it, where exactly does that come from? Well, that came from a, a lot of sources. And it started uh, in various areas. We, there was, a court, of course, a quiet campaign in which foundations were contacted and, and certain uh, larger donors made donations. But it also was generated through a, a campaign that went all the way down to the grassroots level and in that by primarily the parishes of the Catholic Diocese of Tulsa uh, each parish had an individuals within the parish that were chairs within that parish and, and attempted to raise money through the, through the parishes too so we had donations uh, as little as ten dollars uh, to donations as large as million dollars when that campaign was completed. Hmm. Uh, Kevin uh, in that connection three weeks ago or two weeks ago we did a show with Ken Levitt of the George Kaiser Family Foundation uh, do does Catholic Charities have a, a relationship with George Kaiser Family Foundation certainly we have a lot of foundations that support us the Kaiser Foundation helped us in in two ways uh, one is through our building campaign they provided a large gift for our education center at the new campus they also on an ongoing basis every year help us with our dental program and so the funding for the dental program is Delta Dental and the Kaiser Foundation. Um, but uh, we would extend that to the yeah. Chapman Foundation and many others uh, help us every year. Uh, our funding comes from a lot of sources, individuals, as Randall said, and foundations. The one place we would stray from, uh, try and uh, stay away with, is uh, government organizations, contracts, uh, or um, things of that nature. What we find is that there's um, a level of, I guess you might just say bureaucracy, if I could say that, that comes with, necessarily, with government funding uh, that kind of hinders us from doing our mission. And uh, we find that it's just better to stay with individual donations. Tell me more about that education center. The education center allows us to offer classes day and night. Uh, they usually range uh, from GED classes, ESL classes, uh, we'll have the what Tulsa. Was that second type of oh, I'm sorry. English is a second language. Oh. I'm speaking a foreign language here with all the <laughs> acronyms, I guess. But uh, GED classes help people get their uh, their degree, their high school diploma, if you will. And uh, ESL is for uh, people who don't speak English natively. Uh, we help people with finance classes. Uh, everything from how to learn how to um, help your child uh, grow into a, being a toddler and do that in the right way, uh, to how to balance your checkbook. People come from all of our various programs. You might be living at, at Madonna House, a maternity residential program, or you could be uh, coming in uh, through our emergency mm -hmm. services, and you'll take these classes. Kevin, how important it is, is it that, that the people that are receiving services have some sort of exit strategy? I mean, how, how, how important is it to Catholic Charities that there's some sort of end to the yeah. level of services they're receiving? Well, we find uh, that it's very important for, for them that they don't become dependent upon us and, and for us because there's uh, no end to the number of people who are, are needing help. And so what we try and do is, is uh, gradually work people towards independence. They may come in with a need that is overwhelming for them at the time, but pretty quickly we can help them find their future, find the hope that Randall was talking about. And uh, it's not in our interest or theirs for them to become dependent on Catholic Charities. And, uh, and so we really work hard to not let that happen. Uh, <clears throat> a little bit of shameless promotion here. For we're we're not above that. No, we're not. Well, I'll just prove it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, our very first sponsor was Delta Dental of Oklahoma. Oh, very good. And they are involved in your dental care program, I understand. That's right. That's right. Uh, what, what does Delta Dental of Oklahoma do for your dental program? There's several things. We uh, started off with Delta Dental by having them help us uh, to procure the various equipment needs that we had. Everything that we have in our dental program is brand new. Uh, the, from the um, chairs that we use to the instruments that are used on people, we didn't want to go with secondhand material. And Delta Dental helped us uh, achieve that goal. The second thing they do is they help us with our operating costs. 
they cover, uh, for example, uh, the needs that we have in getting dentures created. Uh, we have a contract with a dental laboratory and they help pay for that. The third thing I would say, though, is that they help by convening uh, groups like groups. So we're not the only free dental program in Oklahoma. Yeah. Delta Dental will convene all the groups together and we'll find best practices. We'll find ways that we can improve our product, the services we offer, by looking at how others do their job. And Delta Dental's been really helpful in that. Uh, what about uh, the uh, Mother Teresa Women's Health Services? Can you tell us about that? Sure, Mother Teresa Women's Health Services is a new uh, service that we have. We find uh, one of the great things about this program is we're able to bring uh, residents from OSU into our uh, facilities w along with their, uh, their teachers, the doctors who uh, train them, and give them practical experience on prenatal care. And when they do that, uh, they have a community mindset. They understand what it means to serve uh, people in distress situations in pregnancy and uh, they're gonna be better doctors because of that. And also at the same time, we get to serve people in need. We get to give them health care uh, that they wouldn't have otherwise right there in, in North Tulsa where there isn't a whole lot of access to health care. Mm -hmm. Randall, it seems to me one of the services that you provide really is there's a lot of people that wanna help, but by giving money to Catholic Charities of Tulsa, they kind of have some level of comfort that the money's gonna be spent wisely and responsibly, but, and they couldn't necessarily make those decisions themselves on whom to help or how to help them. That's correct, and, and the wide variety of programs that's provided by Catholic Charities gives them an opportunity to support help in, in the many ways that, that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise by just giving to one single organization here, one single organization mm -hmm. there. Well, Kevin, where is the need? If, if someone wanted to volunteer their professional services or just had an interest in helping people in general, where could you plug them in uh, uh, most quickly? We sit down and interview the individual and find what it is that they want to do. I mean, we have fantastic talent, whether it be uh, Randall as a volunteer or his family. Uh, we have uh, dentists, attorneys, we have uh, phlebotomists, we have people who say, I, I want to leave that stuff behind and I don't want right. to sack groceries. Don't need mayors. Mayors are mayors. Oh, are mayors are important. <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> uh, mayors a are worthless vocation. Vastly important, vastly important. Uh, because really it's all a, a human endeavor. It's all about uh, working with people at the level uh, where they understand that people care for them. Yeah. Well, Mayors care for people, right? Important. Mayors care for people. Well, of course we do, but, you know, but you, I, I think you just hit on a key point, and it, it is that people in Oklahoma do care. That's right. And, and there are needs here that are, are probably um, uh, above the national average, but um, people don't necessarily know how to help. And, right. I, and I think it's wonderful that organizations like yours exist that kind of can help channel all that wonderful um, uh, community good that's right. that is out there in this in this community um, because people need someone to organize it. You that's know, right. they, they can't take it on by themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right. And I think when we do organize and come together, uh, we can do so much more than we could individually. And I would like to say also that uh, when we talk with the people that we serve and say, how did we help you today? They almost never mention the groceries or uh, the dental work or the other things that we've talked about. What they say is they say, you help me know that, that there's a brighter tomorrow. You help me know that I have a future. And so every single person that comes as a volunteer could just sit down and be a friend with somebody. And in that process, you'll, you'll help the folks that we serve. Kevin Sartorius, Randall Snap, thanks for the great work the two of Thank you are you. doing with yeah, Catholic Charities of Tulsa. Really appreciate it. Uplifting show, to Thank you. say Indeed. the least. Kent and I will have a final word when we get back. Good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you.
In Oklahoma, we enjoy a high quality of life due to good, well-paying jobs. Commercial real estate professionals play a significant role in bringing new businesses and investments to Oklahoma. The commercial real estate community has come together to market Oklahoma's commercial properties nationwide through a free public website, okcommercialproperty.com. We are invested in keeping Oklahoma strong and growing because economic development ensures quality of life. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political government and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. We're wrapping up the show. We learn more about Catholic Charities of Tulsa. And I got to tell you, I learned a lot uh, for, for this uh, um, uh, facility to have a $22 million uh, injection of funds and then to be able to offer this wide variety of services is very impressive. Yeah, with no federal funds and no, yeah, no that's government pretty, funds. That's pretty good. It is really uh, spectacular. And what they're doing for the citizens of Tulsa and the surrounding area is just uh, unbelievably laudatory. And by the way, just in this uh, minute we have left, or seconds we have left, uh, thanks to... Uh, uh, Randy Carson and the folks at Cox for making these three shows uh, uh, done in Tulsa here so easy and pleasant and getting uh, everything set up nicely. And making us look good, which is no small task. That is a problem. <laughs> we have some website information on Catholic Charities, how you can get more information. If you'd like to be involved, you can reach them at catholiccharities.org. That's catholiccharities.org. And of course, we have a website. We'd love you to go there and tell us about a show or a guest that you'd like to see on a future edition. Our website is theverdict.tv. That's theverdict.tv. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We will see you next week right here on this set for a very exciting show of The Verdict. We'll see you then. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.